Hey folks, got a question from a viewer I think is very appropriate, especially in these times. Uh, market's down about 5% as I'm speaking. And a lot of people, yeah, they're projecting 20%, 50%. Hey, every, every, every month you can get somebody saying the end of the world's coming, uh, into the market. Uh, you know, during the last, uh, you know, 12, 13 years of a bull run, uh, countless people on TV and, you know, on the internet and uh, in newspapers saying the end is coming, the end is coming, and you just can't listen to any of that. Um, but this this individual sent me a message saying, hey, they're five years out from uh, retiring and they're just overwhelmingly stressed about how the market goes up and down. And, you know, in, uh, they understand that I use the bucket approach. Uh, we, I've talked about that in other videos, but... Hey, Joe, how do you handle the stress? How do you handle the stress of market downs? So, you know, I, I you know, thought I would go through my reply, and it's in small text. That's why I got my reading glasses on here. Um, but I really have four things. Then this is my story, okay? This is not necessarily right or wrong, but my story. But number one thing, information, okay? Information trumps fear, Okay. Um, a while, year, several years ago, somebody told me that uh, fear stands for false expectations appearing real. So you just worry, you know, about stuff that, um, you know, most of the time does not happen. Yes, there was the 1929 stock market crash. Yes, Japan has been in a, you know, a flat market for 30 years. Yes, the lost decade of 2000 to 2010. Okay, we've, we've got those examples out there. Those things can not happen. But um, information. So when I get a little stressed, a little worried, I've got two go-to books that I look at. This is Debunkery by Ken Fisher. And he taught, there's like 50 um, uh, points that are common myths that people have about the market, how it works. Bonds are more conservative. Uh, are they really uh, in the long haul? Uh, he puts a great argument together that they are not more, more conservative in the long haul because when you factor in inflation, they, it actually destroys wealth. Talks about presidential elections, talks about pandemics, uh, talks about, you know, selling May. Uh, it's just 50 bucks about the, the market, uh, bull markets, bear markets. This is great. Each, each uh, bunk is about four pages long. Excellent. Actually, I have a second book, and I'm going to talk about this one a little bit more. Uh, Simple Wealth, Inevitable Wealth by Nick Murray. And I've got a particular page I'm going to uh, talk about. And this is going to be a pop-up picture in here. But, you know, when you look at the market short term, <laughs> there's a lot of panic. You know, and uh, CNN, the news media, the MSNBC... The newspapers, a lot of YouTube channels like to talk about the panic because it draws viewers back. They're in the uh, marketing business. They're trying to get you to tune in to the next video, to the next television show, okay? So investing is a long-term game. This uh, chart that I'm looking at, you know, says, hey, uh, in one year, uh, just looking at each individual year, going back to, what do they start with, um, uh, 1926. If you look at individual years, 75% of them uh, were uh, positive returns. Okay, 75%. That's three out of every four years will be positive returns. If you go to three years, it jumps to almost 84%. Five years, 88%. Uh, Ten-year periods, 94%. And then 15-year periods, 99.68%. And 20-year periods, 100% of the time, going from 1926 to 2018. It's a long game, okay? So it, you don't, you got to be prepared for that bear to hit you down three, four, five, six, even seven years. You know, now getting out towards seven gets more and more rare, uh, but it does happen. You know, when you get up like that 10 year period, it's 95%, you know, of the time it's going to be positive. That means 5%. It's not going to be positive during that time period. It's not going to be very negative. It's on the way to recovery, but that's, that's what history tells you. So in your approach, you got to accept that you're going to have these dips. You're going to have 20, 30, 40, 50% dips. 
And you know, the majority of those, the, the dip is gonna be over after about three years and then you're gonna start your recovery back up. And if you look after those dips, there's pretty great market returns. So you got it. the message is, look at the information. Dips are natural, they're gonna happen. Have your investment portfolio lined up where you can handle these dips. That's, I use the bucket approach. I've got a bucket one to handle a four year dip. And I got bucket two in, in modest uh, investments, uh, dividend uh, paying uh, uh, investments, just more conservative, you know, basic blue chip stocks, got some bonds in there. And that can take me out to eight years, okay? So I'm, I'm really prepared to handle pushing an eight year uh, event. And, uh, you know, a lot of you can't do that, but uh, you know, that that's, that's pretty extreme, some people tell me, but at least four years, you got to plan on it because history says it's going to be happening. If you look at five-year periods, it's 88% of the time you're going to have to make positive returns. That means 12% of the time you're not. You got to be in this for the long game, okay? So information is something uh, that you got to um, look at. Television, I'm telling you, the problem when the market goes down 20%, you draw to, you're drawn to the TV, you're drawn to the headlines, and people prey on you with uh, doomsday, you know, and, and if it bleeds, it leads, right? And then you're gonna be tuning back in. So bury yourself in information, you know, information. Uh, that's what I do. I, I If I get stressed, I'll reread both these books. Uh, and they're pretty short reads and, and uh, you can read them in little segments too. Um, so information, information, you're in the long game. Anything that happens within a three year period is just freaking noise, okay? Uh, Number two, stop looking at your investments every single day. Good gosh, you know, a farmer doesn't go out and measure his corn crop every day. You know, he doesn't plant the seed out there and just say, well, well nothing, nothing, nothing today, nothing tomorrow, nothing next. You know, you're playing the long game, you know, you're playing the long game. Uh, bad things happen and you got to be prepared for that. Bucket one. Um but uh, in bucket one, the intent is not to, you know, have, if you have four years in bucket one, not to get that down to zero. You keep topping that off during the good times. You keep it at four years, four years, four years. It's there. So when the bear hits, the bear market, you've got that four year uh, to work through before you have to tap into um, uh, selling other investments. Stop looking at your bounce daily. Um, number three, you know, and this makes me feel better. I don't know if, you know, I don't know. Uh, if 1929 happens or Japan happens and, you know, you get very stagnant markets, I mean, things are going to be bad for everybody. You know, they're bad for everybody. You know, hopefully you have a skill and this particular individual is a, you know, a maintenance leader, you know, and gosh, maintenance leaders are hard to find. People with that skill to understand how equipment works and how to repair it. You can always go back to work. You know, even if you're 65, 70, you can always go back to work. Uh, it's not desirable, but accept that for some peace. Say, hey, if, if we go into a 20-year just total chaos in the market, dropping like a rock, everybody's going to be in bad shape. You got a skill, okay? So accept that and say, hey, you know, things are going to be bad, but I'll be better off the most because I got this skill. That helps me, okay? Uh, I happen to be an engineer, happen to be a, 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 a plant manager, uh, CMRP, you know, I've got, I can be in uh, maintenance arenas, I can be in uh, engineering, I can go, go into consulting, I can go into plant operations. I always have that skill um, going forward. So it's critical you get a skill uh, in life, I believe. Okay, and number four, and, and this is just a joke, okay? <laughs> okay, we're in the information age, okay? You know, I'm convinced that I, I believe, uh, and my son actually tipped me off on this, um, got me thinking that I think bears going forward are going to be a little bit shorter. And that's because there's so much information out there that people know that a great time to make wealth uh, is in bear markets. So buy low, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, uh, uh, you know, just a name that, that came to me. <laughs> He's an individual that, that uh, and I, I think this um, uh, Ken Fisher did the same thing is, hey, you know, whenever the market goes down 25, 30%, it's time to buy. And you got a lot of millennials, a lot of people that know that, they see these patterns. So 
when um, you've got this panic going on, you're going to have a huge number of people that are just pouring money into the stock market. It's going to make that bear shorter, okay? Because they're investing. Uh, you know, bear markets continue because of panic. Um, but so my my belief is bears are going to be shorter for uh, a couple of reasons. Number one is information, knowledge of how the markets work, knowledge how wealth is made in these bear markets. Um, the second thing is I really believe we're in, and you know, I, I kind of follow up Kathy Wood too. There are some very neat things going on in the, um, um, manufacturing world, uh, in, in the, uh, economy, let's say with some innovation, uh, groundbreaking, uh, technologies that are out there. Blockchain can completely change how we do finance. You know, robotics, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, genomics, uh, how we do health, uh, uh, automation. These things are all converging right now and are. I think it's a great time to be in manufacturing and to be in business because of these technologies are fundamentally changing how work is done. You know, think about Zoom. You know, 20 years ago, you ever think about Zoom calls, people working from home? You ever think about autonomous cars being a reality? You know, it, it, it's happening. Autonomous trucking is happening. Artificial intelligence is in every, I don't know an industry that it's not in. I'm, I'm excited about the future, okay? So whenever I get down about, you know, the bear markets, economy's going down, I look forward, call me an optimist, and I say, man, we haven't hit our best stride yet because of this innovation um, technology that's like doubles every 18 months. Man, it, it's, uh, it is so exciting what I see in the future of the economy that I can't believe bear markets are going to last longer and longer. Not saying it can't. I'm saying this is one of my four uh, thought processes I go through to feel good and not stress out, sleep at night. Um, that's what I do. So I'm convinced bears are gonna be shorter uh, because of the information age and innovation. Uh, you know, if things go bad, like they did in 1929 or in Japan, it's gonna be bad for everybody, folks. It's, it's, it's gonna be bad for everybody and you hopefully you got a skill. Number two, stop looking at your balance daily, okay? Just stop looking at it daily. And number one, information. Information trumps fear, okay? Let's see, here's, this is Joe. <laughs>